no role plays, just real. Chris and Lorenzo share four decades of combined experience to help you become a more effective leader. We've never really, as a workforce, spent a lot of time on making sure we're developing good leaders. We'll be able to share stories, experience, mistakes, uh, failures, successes. This is Hacking Your Leadership. Welcome to Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Chris. And I'm Lorenzo. And Lorenzo, on this episode, I want to talk about my sixth grade science fair project. Oh, this sounds fun. I I think I did a volcano or something. I don't remember. Everybody (laughs) did the volcano. (laughs) I did something called uh, phototropism. And what it is basically is it's the idea that, that plants are kind of attracted to light. And so what I did is I set up this, this box in my garage, and it was a dark garage intentionally, and you, you put a lot of plants in it, and you put a, a light that's meant for like a, on top of a reptile cage. It's a, it's a, a UV light. Sometimes they get used for um, people who get like seasonal depression in like Washington and Oregon. You get like these lights prescribed to you that have UV, and you put the UV light like way off in the corner, and you watch how the plants will grow towards the light. And then um, the cool thing is, is that, you know, the project is, you know, six months long. After two months of it being in one corner, you move it to the exact opposite corner and you watch the plants kind of grow in this like S shape because they'll grow towards the light and then they'll flip around and come back the other way. And you can actually make a plant grow in like this curved structure back and forth and back and forth, almost in a switchback, depending on where you put the light. And it's a really cool, cool thing. And, it, and plants are, are naturally attracted to this. And I thought about this because of this article with um, from Harvard Business Review, and it's called The Best Leaders Have a Contagious Positive Energy. And I thought about this because in the article, they actually reference this idea of phototropism where where plants grow towards light. Mm-hmm. And and it's it, it works for people too. People grow towards this this contagious positive energy. Um, you know, you read the article too. What what do you think about this? Yeah, I, I like it a lot, and I agree. Like, I think that you know we've talked about it uh, a few times before, and I talk about it a lot. But like, energy matters when it comes to leadership, and especially like. You know, I say especially positive energy, but also negative energy also matters because that can have a negative effect. Like sure. if you if you don't have that light or the or the light bulb burns out or you unplug it from the wall, well then what happens to those plants, right? They have nothing to look towards, right? And then you can say they that, were growing towards the light, but equally so, they are growing away from the dark. Exactly, right? <laughs> so, no, I, I really enjoyed the article and and, and I think uh, you know, for me, I've always believed that, that like there's, there's an element of positive energy that leaders bring that people are attracted to. Um, and, you know, like there's always a nuance around like we've all had those leaders and people that we've known that it feels like it's fake energy. Like, like, sure. it's like you're not really being like, you know, you're not being authentic enough. I'm not seeing enough of you as a real person to believe that you have this positive, natural light and energy. Um, but I think over time. For people I, like myself, I, I'm I'm attracted to that style of leadership. I want somebody who, uh, who 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 yeah, like is going to you know stretch me for my potential, but at the same exact time that that sees the work as positive work and fun and and learning and celebrates you know the the successes and the positive recognition just as much as is messes with me and cracks jokes about the times that I've made mistakes and screwed things up. Like, like that's the, that, that element of, of positivity and good energy is so important for me. Um, but I think for in, for people in general, especially as leaders, you know, in this, uh, that listen to this podcast and are looking for development, like how, how are you showing up in those spaces and what type of energy do you bring? Yeah, it's so true. The, um, part of the article references research, um, done out of UC Irvine and that says that the need for positive social connection is so great that the lack of it is worse for your health than smoking, obesity, or high blood pressure. And you know we can we can see that in just the the almost the de-evolution of people during the pandemic. You, you know we saw uh, in in the retail space how customers seem to devolve. They they went from like you know maybe maybe 2% of the customers were just like, you know, really, really terrible people. And then you had some that were kind of like, you know, just average and you had some that were great. That 2% grew substantially, uh, the, the number of people who were just terrible people to employees and to, and to organizations. And, and it's, I believe it's because the lack of social connection, the, the kind of forced withdrawal from society. And I'm not giving them a pass. You, know, you should never treat people poorly. But explaining why this is happening is not the same thing as giving them a pass. I think it's happening because they don't have that positive social connection that we are just so 
in need of, you know, just the, the talking to other parents in the school drop off line, um, you know, being around coworkers that you get along with. Maybe for a lot of people, home is not their safe place. They don't get along with their spouse. They, they, they have young children at home and they love their children, but it's really hard to have adult conversation with young children. You, you need to have the, the friendships and the kinships and the, the things that we do as, as people. Um, when that's taken away, that lack of positive social connection is, is terrible for our health. And we see it the exact same way when it comes to leadership and people at work. The people who are leaving work environments in droves right now are people who say that they don't feel respected at work. There, there's the, the, It's all about what they feel when it comes to their leadership team. And if you don't have that positive social connection, if you don't have that positive energy, then people will grow away from you, which which means leaving. Yeah, no, I think it's a great point. But I even think of just myself in those types of spaces, like not having that element of energy, not being around people physically, um, having the need to want to get outside and do things and like be, you know, like again, like it's just a, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a thing for all of us. And I think it's just a, it's a, it's easy because we all experience that together um, in our own ways, we can see it for ourselves. We can see it around others around us. We could kind of reference the the pandemic, um, and, but I think it highlights exactly what this article is talking about, which is you know the the need for that in leadership and and how not having that um, can cause uh, all, everything from from health issues to just uh, a lack of confidence to the ability to 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 take you know calculated risks to better yourself you know in work and at home. Um, and, and I think that it's a, you know, as we've talked about what's different and kind of, you know, pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, we've talked about leadership, we've talked about EQ, we've talked about connection. Um, I think this is also going to be one of those things where, you know, th- there will probably be a larger rise in these kind of positive energy style leaders um, who who people, you know, enjoy being around and want to talk to and want to discuss things with. Uh, because, you know, as people make those choices and they see that nuance and if, if people feel like, well, I can have that element of a leader over here um, or I can not have that, but maybe I make a little bit more money or maybe I have this job over here. I think people will continue to make those types of decisions to, to follow people and leaders that provide that for them. The idea of being able to do this if it's not in, inherent to you is is a tough one because I know for me, the the experiences of my own personal life are are what have led me to prioritize things in a way that try that where, where I try to come to work like this. I try to lead people in this way with a with a sense of positivity. And and what it comes down to is a, it's a combination of things. It's I think it's empathy and I think it's prioritization. And so, you know, as a parent, there's nothing more important to me than than my kids. And the things that I do are all in spirit of something that will benefit them or or my relationship with them or their long term their 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 future. That's a, that was a huge shift for me when I had kids before where you know what was best was for me or or for my career or whatever that is. That 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 change would not have been possible for me to fake or for me to make happen without the actual life-changing experience of having them. Um, similarly, you know, being diagnosed with cancer several years ago and getting through that, the, the it's a, it's amazing what a situation like that will do for your reprioritization, right? Uh, the, the, thinking about mm-hmm. what's important to you and what's not important, that that can lead to a tremendous growth in empathy for other people who have different situations and just kind of realizing that everybody kind of brings their own baggage to wherever they are and and to not just kind of like jump to assuming that your experience is the same experience as other people because everybody is so different. I I, I think that, you know, obviously we, I wouldn't wish anybody, um, you know, something as, as uh, terrible as that is going through that. But, but I think everybody listening right now, you need to think about the things that have happened to you in your life that were that were challenging or that were troubling, the things that you got through came out the other side, or maybe you're maybe you're going through it right now. Those are the types of situations that will that if you can get through it the right way, will will lead you to be able to do this in a better way because it will increase your empathy and it will increase your sense of prioritization on what's important. And and when it comes to leaders who you know, give off this positive energy, it doesn't mean that they are they're they're, they're always positive and that they're neg- never negative. Positive energy is, is is around almost like this this acceptance of of how the world works 
and and not trying to be something that you're not, not trying to to put on this mask um, uh, uh, that, that says, I'm at work now, I got to act a certain way. It's, it's being yourself and being positive, not just being positive for the sake of being positive. It's, it's, it's harder to explain, but if, if, if anybody who's gone through a situation like the ones that I've been through, there's, there's no way you're not looking at listening to this and resonating with you in some way, like thinking, yes, I, I get this. Um, and so you really, really drill into these things if you've had them in your own life and think about how they can, you know, le- lead you to lead people better. I think it's going to be even bigger than just like, if, if you're currently not showing up that way, how can you put yourself in a mindset or a place to show up that way? I think this is going to be like, a, like kind of like a selection process. Like I, I truly believe that like go, the go forward on this is that people are going to kind of demand it. And again, it's it's kind of like it's in the the subtlety and the nuance. If you're if you're if you're a person who doesn't see it that way, who who is is putting on the fake positivity element to go to work and kind of do all of that, um, I think over time people will see through that. I think over time people will make decisions uh, again to follow other leaders or go other places. So I think it's imperative. Like I I really truly believe that. Um, yes, perspective is everything. Growth is everything. Maturity is a lot of things. And and when you go through life and you go through some of the things that you've described, and maybe they're not that extreme, but it provides you with an, a, a level um, of, of personal reflection and personal awareness. And, and even like my hope is that at some point gratitude, and I think that's really at the basis of so much of this, is that when you have experiences that, that create gratitude for just the everyday things that you have, um, I think that that is something that, you know, that, that really is going to be helpful for leaders um, in, in, in being able to show up and, and, and have gratitude for the responsibility, have gratitude for their people, have gratitude for the opportunity to help shape people's careers and life and growth and that type of thing. And, and, and again, like I, I think that there are definitely things that can be helpful in connecting some of those dots. I think that it can be helpful in, in having mentors in your life and people that can help you with that self-reflection. But I truly believe that I think the, the workforce going forward is going to demand um, that level of positive energy um, and, and gratitude from leaders. Uh, you know, we've talked about this before, like the history of leadership and leadership styles and things that worked then and don't work now. And I think this will be one of those underlying things going forward that 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 positive energy is going to be really, really big. I like that you talk about gratitude in that because I think, you know, it might might be my favorite leadership quote of all time. And it's been attributed to a lot of different people. So I don't know who exactly coined it first. Um, it's that, it is not joy that makes us grateful. It is gratitude that makes us joyful. And, you know, I think a lot of people put the cart before the horse. They 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 want to be grateful. So they are, they are looking for the things that bring them joy in their life. And they try to be grateful for those things. And and it is a it's really tough to find joy if you're not already grateful. But if you find the things that have already happened, if you're not looking for something that's going to make you joyful in order to be grateful for it, if you just start with the things that have already happened, it's amazing how quickly and how easily you find joy in other things and it becomes a cycle that feeds itself. And this is the exact same thing that happens when it comes to leadership and positive energy. Positive energy from leaders increase the positive energy from their people and then the positive energy from the people increase the positive energy from the leader. And it is a cycle that will continue and it is contagious. Meaning if you have a team of people that is largely not positive, let's just start with like a worst case scenario here. It might take a while before you, before you as a leader can turn that team around, but you'll turn one or two people around pretty quickly because they want to be there. They, it, it's the, the, they naturally want to be there. And, and the people who fight being there are people who have been burned so much in the past because they, they put that trust and they, put the, they, they give that joy and they open up themselves and then they get burned by whoever the leader or the, or the organization is. And, and now they are really withdrawn and, and they, they, they're really selective on who they show that positive energy for or to. But the human, the human person needs to be there anyway. They, we want to be there. And so if you, if you as a leader are doing this consistently, you will start to see a turning of the tide and, and you'll get people who 
don't want to be in the space where they are, where they don't have positive energy. They'll see the positive energy coming from you and maybe a couple of their teammates or coworkers, and they'll want to be there. And, and they'll, they'll dip their toe in the water a little bit and it will grow and it will take time. But, but if you can see the long-term positive results or potential in this, um, I, I don't think it's, it's possible to go about it any other way because the only other option is to give into it. And then you're going to really dislike your job and you're going to burn out as a leader too. So, you, you know, go, go forward with this way, even if it is something that it could take a few months, it could take a few years. There could be turnover associated with it. There could be people who just don't come along for the ride and they, they fight against it so hard that they become not appropriate for your team anymore. And you have to, you have to get rid of them. Um, but for the most part, people want to be here. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to this episode's one minute hack, but first a few words from our sponsors. The one minute hack. All right, for this episode's Woman and Hack, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about this quote by John Quincy Adams. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a positive, energizing leader. And I added those words positive and energizing in there. Um, he didn't actually say that in, the, in the, uh, uh, the original quote. I want you to think about your situation as a, 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 an employee or as a person in your own environment, your own organization. Think about the leadership that you report up to and the peers that you surround yourself with. Think about those people and how they inspire you to dream more, become more, do more, and learn more. If they are doing that, then it's your job to figure out how to pay that forward to the people reporting up to you. If they don't do that, then you need to seriously consider whether or not it's the right place for you. So write down your pen and paper, do more, become more, dream more, and learn more. And if you can, you can look at those four items and think, okay, I have this person that does this for me, this person that does this for me. I can, I can use these tools. I can talk to this person and you find out how I can pay it forward to my people. If you can have that relationship, then you're in, probably in the right place and you can kind of continue this cycle with positive energy. If you're not getting that and, and, and you can't summon it on your own, which is really difficult to do, then it might not be the right place for you. Yeah, I think it's a really good woman to hack. And like, the, I, like I've been there, honestly. Like, I've, I've been there where I have had leaders. And, and, you know, thankfully, the vast majority of my career falls into the space where I have felt, like, inspired and, and, and people have challenged me to to dream more and to learn and, and, and all those types of things. But there have been times in my career where that was not the case. And I can share that it's, it is significantly harder to show up for your people and fulfill this type of positive energy when you are yourself not receiving it. Um, because again, it, it's a, if you don't have the light that's needed to, to push you and inspire you, and, and it feels like you're just surrounded by the darkness element, it is really hard to be that light for other people. Um, and that's why this is so important. I think in leadership is to think about, are, are you getting that? Um, and, and if you're not, that can happen, but then what are you doing with your own intent or where are you pulling that, that, that resource from to make sure that you can continue to be the light needed for your people? Um, and just realizing that over time that cannot sustain, you, you've got to figure something out. Sometimes it's figured out for you and somebody, uh, you know, leaves, um, or, or is, is no longer there working with you or that you work for. Uh, but sometimes you have to make the decision for yourself. Yeah. And I also think this is. This is an interesting topic because I think there are a lot of people out there who have never experienced this, and it's really difficult to see the lack of something that you've never had before. So if you've had a positive leader in the past where they've, this has all been done for you, and now you're currently in a situation where that's not the case, pretty easy to see that. You can, you can contrast it very easily. But I think a lot of people out there have never been in a situation where they've had this type of leadership before. And so they think whatever their current situation is, is the norm. And they look at things like dream more and do more and become more. And, and it's so ethereal to them that it's like, like, how is that even tangible? What do you, what do you mean dream more and do more and become more? Uh, if you've been, if you've ever reported up through a leader who does this well, you know exactly what this is. You know exactly how that leader has inspired you to do those things. It is not ethereal. It is, it is actual tangible things that you can get from positive leadership. And if you can't even process what that feels like, then it probably means you've never had this in your life. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to the end of this episode. This is Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Lorenzo. And I'm Chris. And we'll talk to you all next time. <laughs> <laughs>